Dr. Gonstead received his bachelor's degree from the University of Wisconsin and graduated from the Palmer College in 1923. In his over 43 years of practice, he has given over 3 million adjustments, and it's easy to understand how he does this because he does it by working 16 to 20 hours a day, six days a week. And he's done this for many years. And in the process of doing th this, through his creative efforts and his dedication, he has developed the Gonstead system of analysis and adjusting. Uh, he has also introduced and developed many innovations in the use of chiropractic equipment. And he has made this information from this vast experience available to the field through seminars all over the country and especially in his extraordinary clinic in Mount Horeb, Wisconsin, which I'm sure many of you have seen. Dr. Gonstead was one of seven individuals who have received the Daniel David Palmer Chiropractic Scientific Award, which was presented to him in 1964 here at the Palmer College. He is a guest lecturer for the college and has spoken to many of our students and alumni uh, on various occasions here and elsewhere. So it is indeed a privilege of Palmer College this afternoon to present to you Dr. Clarence S. Gonstead. Chiropractors, ladies and gentlemen, and friends, it's real indeed gratifying to see what a fine bunch of chiropractors we have here today. It makes my heart feel real good. Because when I'm down here at the PC, uh, PCC, I feel that we got the cream of the crop. Anybody that'll leave their practice and spend a few days and come down here to obtain a little additional knowledge, they're gonna go back and, and uh, set the trail for the other ones that are not here. We need this uh, revival every so often. We go home and we get into the ruts. We start uh, failing on some of our cases. And uh, we wonder why we fail on some of these. And by coming back here to the Palmer College, we pick up some of these things that, that uh, steers, us, steers us the way to correct these things where we have failed. Chiropractic has come a long way in the last 72 years, but we haven't seen anything yet in chiropractic. Chiropractic is so wonderful. It's a, one of the greatest signs in the world. You people think we've come a long ways? We have not. We have yet so much to understand and to apply in the application of, of chiropractic. I got unhooked here. Down yeah, here, doctor. Just hook this up for me. What's that? Well, probably so, yeah. The philosophy, the science, and the art of chiropractic is all, all is synonymous. The philosophy we've had, science we have been lacking. We have had a lot of opinions in the last 72 years, but the scientific facts of our philosophy has been diversified. We've had opinions most down the way, and it's been these opinions that we've had in chiropractic that has caused the discord that we've had in our profession. When there's a lack of understanding amongst a group of individuals, discord is the result of this misunderstanding. But if we can all be educated in the signs and see eye to eye what we should see, that'll create harmony in our field. When we understand what the other man sees or understands, that creates harmony, and that's what we need in our profession. And we up there at Mount Horb, we feel that we have come forth with the, with the development of the scientific approach in chiropractic. We have come forth with this, the scientific aspect of it through research, through clinical findings. And we have come up with these findings and put them on paper 
and make it make it an, on slides and make it understandable so that the other man can see what you see. Now that's a big job to get something on paper or on slides to make them understand so what you see in the, in the way that you see it and apply it the way that you apply it. It's a big job. We, I found that out in the last 40 years. But it has been done and it can be transmitted from one individual to the other. It has been proven in itself up there at our clinic now this last two months when I was laid up with my illness. My staff up there has gone ahead and carried on the clinic just perfectly, perfectly well, just as though I was there myself. Due to the fact that these boys are trained, they're trained with me every day and they can apply this work just as scientifically as I have been doing it in the last 40 years. And we can transmit this to every chiropractor. We can take 50 chiropractors and educate them, train them in pelvic mechanics, spinal mechanics, and they can come up with that one particular subluxation. And when you can take 50 chiropractors and they all come up with that one subluxation, that is the science. Something that no other science can come up with. We as chiropractors have that knowledge of finding that particular subluxation. And it's been our problem in the past amongst us chiropractors is to find that subluxation. And we have uh, developed that knowledge in, in, uh, in a system to find this subluxation. With our uh, modern x-ray equipment, with our modern screens that we have, our, our split screen system, we get sharp x-rays. We have x-rays free of distortion, which we must have in finding the disc involvement which we have come up with. It's a disc concept that, that uh, I want to present to you today, is finding this subluxation through the disc concept. And our work is the full spine Pacific. Full spine Pacific, and we find these subluxations by way of the discs, intervertebral discs. And whenever we have a subluxation, we will have a damaged disc. And we will not have any damaged discs without a subluxation. We will not have any damaged disc or any disc syndrome of any kind without a subluxation. So it's up to us chiropractors to have the knowledge and find these discs and find out why that disc is damaged. And then when we do find out this subluxation, which is damaging this disc, then we must know the position of that subluxation, which has damaged this particular disc. It's a disc damage that creates a compensatory curve into our spine. In the past, it's been difficult for us chiropractors to differentiate between a disc involvement caused by subluxation or a compensatory or apex compensation to a subluxation. Most of the schools, and we have in the past, been, been uh, taken for granted the apex as a subluxation. But the apex in a spinal curve or a compensatory of a subluxation below that apex is our subluxation. Whenever we have an apex or a compensation, we'll have a, a subluxation about three or four vertebra below. That's what's causing this particular scoliosis above. But we have been measuring distance of vertebra, the rotation of vertebra, and we've been picking out the one that's rotated the most as a subluxation, and we would try to track this particular vertebra that has rotated the most, out of place the most, and is classified as a compensatory or an apex due to a subluxation below. What we must do in, in, uh, to find this subluxation is go three, four vertebrae below. And the sad part of it is that vertebrae from an A to P film does not look out of place very much. But you get your lateral film, then you'll pick up your disc damage. 
and from your lateral is where you find your disc damage and your subluxation. We must have lateral x-rays in order to find these disc damages. Then we have your A to P x-ray to give us the position of the vertebra that is causing this disc damage. And it's surprising when we do find these subluxations, how quick these people get well. And it's also surprising when if you don't have that particular subluxation, how long and tedious it, it takes and not get that patient well. It only takes three, three, four adjustments to correct a subluxation. But when you don't get results in two or three adjustments, that indicates that you have not found the subluxation. You are adjusting a compensatory or a vertebra that is not producing pressure. We have uh, various ways of detecting these subluxations besides your disc involvement. We have your, your uh, what you'd call your uh, waterlogged condition. In the past, we, we, we'd be palping for the tautant tender fibers. Tautant tender fibers, ankylosis, and, and most of your arthritic conditions we find in your compensatory area. The subluxated area, we find a lot of waterlogging, a lot of fluid trying to protect this inflamed nerve. And through palpation, you can find these soft waterlogged areas, and then you know that you have the subluxation. The taut and tender fiber area, which we have been looking for, is your compensatory area. Your subluxation area is your if your water logs soft and also more, more sensitive than your compensatory area. Now we also find in these subluxations that we'll have a real sharp instrument peak reading. And uh, that's one of our ways of finding these subluxations, pressure palpation. But the art of palpation has been lost amongst too many of our chiropractors. You've got to get back to palpation, fellow chiropractors. You've got to get the feel of a subluxation. I can get a hold of a vertebra and feel it. I know when I got a hold of a subluxation, it's got a different feel. It's got a feel all its own. In fact, every vertebra is, is, has its own characteristic. I can grab a vertebra anywhere in the spine, and I know what vertebra I'm on because it's there's no two vertebrae alike in that spine. They all have its own characteristics.